call the meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of August 30th. They look good to me. Me too. Okay. I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes of August 30th. A second. All in favor? Aye. I'll say aye. And that's, uh, I, we, I think we're supposed to do roll call, right? I mean, that's, I, I do see that as people start back into Zoom again. Yeah. Uh, we all yeah, did. Since we're all remote, it should be roll call. Thank you. Yeah. But since we all vocally gave our answers and each one of us live on camera, I think that's okay. an effective roll call. Um, so I, I did not see the accounts, the, the accounts payable warrant, the payroll warrant, or the payroll deduction warrant. Oh, I saw those. Louise sent them. All right. I didn't get to that. I, I don't I, think I saw them, but hmm. I, I, I will take a good look at them tomorrow morning. Um, but in the meantime, we need to sort of provisionally approve them so that we, we can authorize ourselves to sign them. Do you want me to give you the amounts? Is that what you need? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, do you have them handy? Oh, we're in total here. I got the warrant total. All right. So, um, the first one is. Sorry, is that my feedback? Um, oh, it is. Is um, warrant twenty two oh seven in the amount of eighty one thousand two hundred thirty one dollars and oh um, five cents. Okay, what's the second one? In the third. Uh, so then the payroll is. 111, 917. 917, and five cents. And the payroll deduction? On the deductions 27, are 27, 032, 032 and 29. 29 cents. Okay, so to make a motion to approve the accounts payable warrant, the payroll warrant, and the payroll deduction warrant that are um, all, all 22-07. Second. Roll call. Yes. Bob, yes. Erica, yes. Okay. So that's approved. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Erica? None since our last meeting. Yeah. Um, Bob? Well, I, I had a wonderful road trip with Veronique. We went and we visited... Uh, uh, an official awarding that Conway received of an MVP grant with uh, oh, wonderful. Baker and, uh, uh, and, and the Lieutenant Governor Polito. And it was down in East Hampton at a beautiful park. Uh, and anyway, it, it, it was a nice morning and, and Vernica, it was fun to ride with you. And, uh, and we had one Conservation Commission site visit this week. So that's it for me. Very nice. Do, do we have a picture of the from with uh, you and the gov? Uh, they took some, but uh, I, I, I can. I have a picture. I can send you a picture of the gov and and uh, and the other honchos, uh, who, but not no. with, not with us in it. No. Yeah. So there, it loses its esteem for me. It does. That. It does. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, all right. And as for myself, um, I'm drawing a blank. I don't, I don't remember. Um, pu public comments. Is there no public? Old business. Um, it, it wasn't uh, the, the, the old business that I hoped would be on the agenda. I didn't notice it till too late. That was the, uh, uh, the mini grant for the, for, for the thing. We talked about that two weeks ago as, wanting to have it on the warrant for this for the agenda for tonight but yes. the mini grants to, so, so that the principal can award those small mm -hmm. that, that we talked yeah. about for like stuff like the the second pair of eyeglasses for the wheelchair kids and stuff like that 
from the German um, fund? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yes. So I'm looking into how to word that. Yeah, um, that's why it's not on tonight because I don't have a draft ready for you all to to review. Right. But I have spoken with uh, Kristen Gordon about it. You did? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Oh. Good, good. So on the new business, then the first item in the new business is Lori Lucier. Yes, Mr. Cantor, it is. <laughs> um, the only thing I need from you guys is I have the town borders, the map for our single precinct town. And I just need you to vote to approve the map and then over the course of the week, pop in the office and just sign off on the two papers. One that says you voted to approve it and one that says you approve it. <laughs> So I, I saw all those papers for, for anybody that does. We've been a single precinct for 260 years. But every um, 10 years, we have to submit sorry. the town map with a description, a legal description of the borders. It's the same description. It's been forever. Mm -hmm. And the same map, it's been forever. Yeah, um, we should claim back that chunk of Waitley that we gave to them in 1810. <laughs> The, the, um, the borders certainly look correct. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, does yeah, anybody yeah. have an issue with being a single precinct town? I, you know. Well, what are the alternatives? We can't. You need to have at least, I think it's 5,999 residents, registered voters to be two. So we, there is no alternative. Right. Yeah. So, so um, make a motion to recommend... Um, that we sign all that. I uh, second. Uh, roll Bob, call. I vote aye. Roll call. Roll call. Aye. Yeah. Erica, yes. All right. So, uh, but but Phil, I do have a question about that document, that long document. Yes, sir. Embedded in that long document, there was what looked like a census report, and it had a list of people by neighborhood. It looked like. Uh, it, you know, it, there wasn't any description of what all the numbers were. It looked like an Excel spreadsheet. And oh, it, yep, yep. Um, it just said precinct one, precinct one, precinct one, a whole yeah, lot of it, neighborhood numbers. They're, they're um, dividing up how many Caucasian registered voters, how many Black, how many Native American. So it's just the numbers, how many male, how many female, how many senior, how many, you know, under 21. And is that a result of this recent yes. recent census? It said 2020 on it. So is that, that the is last it, yeah. census through 2020 or the new yeah. census that we just did? No, the census we just did is 2020. It's every 10 years. And we're working on it now in 2021, but the census was for 2020. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about, is there any easy way for us to really think about all of the, you know, the, the people who it looks like Conway shrank. And we could go through those numbers and see at least which neighborhoods maybe lost population. And just to say, gee, does that make sense? I, I'm just wondering. Uh, if, we, if we can tell which neighborhoods they are, we, yeah. we might be able to. I mean, right now we are sitting on about 70 vacant houses. Is that the number I gave you, Veronique? Does that sound right? Yeah. We have had it a lot might, of people leave. It might be more useful to sort of map out where those houses are. Oh, what? the vacant ones? Yes. Yeah, that's something that Lee has. The assessors have a list of all the vacant houses. And I'm sure I could put one together. In fact, I think I did. I think I gave Veronique a list of what I had for vacant. Yep. So we do have it. Are those houses for sale? There's definitely not 70 houses for sale in Conway, right? No, uh, I mean, people no they're me not. All Some the of time, them, are there any houses for sale in Conway? And, and, you very know. few, very few. I huh. mean, some, some of them are vacation houses. Some of them are summer houses. But because these people live the majority of the year elsewhere, and that's where their census goes. If they, you know, we've got camping, hunting houses, camping houses. 
It'd be interesting to know how many of those houses were vacant in the last census and how many, you know, I mean, if I can find, I can figure that out. If people, if people's houses that were counted as Conway are now considered vacant um, mm -hmm. and the, those people are no longer counted as Conway residents under the census. I can figure that out. Wow. <laughs> I think. I mean, that's, that's why my real. Yeah, this is Jan here. Um, Hi, Jan. We do have a few. Hi, we do have a few abandoned homes as well. Hmm. Ones that haven't yeah. paid taxes. Anybody have any suggestions how you can, how we can reduce the number of vacant and abandoned homes? Well, vacant homes you're going to have due to, you know, people having hunting camps and summer homes, et cetera. It's, that's just the way it is. It doesn't. Yeah, I think there's a high number of summer homes among Conway residents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And they're not considered residents for the federal census. But how do they decide which right. of your home do you where live you, in and where which you, is your home is your summer home? 51% of the time, where you are, 51%. It doesn't have to do with where you're registered to vote as well? Mm -mm. No? Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm wondering. I, I mean, I have a summer home and, and no one ever asked me the kind of question of where do I spend half my time? I don't, I have no idea how they spent, how they decided for me, which one counts, whether I'm counted in Conway or whether I'm counted on the Cape. I, I, Good question. Well, I have a friend who worked for the census for uh -huh. several years, so I could put you in touch with him <laughs> if you wanted more information about the, the whole process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's that's why my realtor friend called called me up and said there's no way your census numbers are right. If if there were if I, I wish there were more houses for sale in Conway, I could sell them. Right. And then, right. So well, you should go contact people with vacant houses, Phil, and drum up some sales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If I'm counted as living on the Cape and not Conway, my house in Conway is not for sale. Right. <laughs> Nor is your house on the Cape. So Nor is my house on the Cape. More than one, there's right. people that have more than one residence and, and your other residence is considered vacant. So it doesn't really mean anything. Well, it does if they switch which town I'm being counted towards. Well, anyway, just, yeah, I guess. let's see what we can do. But in the meantime, Lori Lucier is still here and we still have one more thing to do with her. We do. I thought that's what we were going to do. Well, we had to do the single precinct with her first. Mm -hmm. um, so, so now now we are going to vote as to whether or not to recommend her um, as an appointment to serve as Temporary Board of Health Clerk. I uh, move that we appoint Lori Lucier as the Temporary Board of Health Clerk because she's been a superlative clerk at every other clerk position in town so far. Well, this, this, would, moved this, her office, would, right? this would actually make every clerk position in town held by Lori Lucier. So, uh, I, I, I take the motion. I fully support it. I second it. Um, all right. Roll call vote. All in favor. And I would support your vote. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So oh. as Bob, I say aye. Erica was yes. Right. Erica say yes. And I am yes. Congratulations, Lori. You are the clerk of everything. Clerk of the work. <laughs> That actually should be new, that actually should no that actually could be your new title. Clerk of the works. Yeah. Clerk of every, clerk of everything. <laughs> okay, so. thank you guys and I'm going to leave you cuz my dinner's here. Okay, thank you. And I have another meeting soon, so thank you guys. Right, have a good you. one. <laughs>
Thanks. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Phil. And um, and since Jan is still here, we get to talk to Jan about the next item on the agenda, which is to approve a journal entry to reduce the 2021 CPA receivables by $207.16 to balance the accountant to the tax collector's figures. Yeah. That so, is a, that's, um, that's a mouthful for $200, Jan. It is. And normally we wouldn't ask for such a thing. We would just, you know, in, bill it out internally. But this was caused by a computer glitch uh, that's half due to our assessor's conversion and our preliminary tax billings and half due to our new um, tax collection software that you know we've had for about a year and a half, maybe two years now. And so somewhere in the middle, this little glitch happened where we over-refunded people on a CPA balance. There were three taxpayers who it happened to, and it was, like I said, a preliminary tax glitch. And for, you know, reasons now that we don't believe it's right to come back at these taxpayers to ask for the money back. We just ask you to um, allow us to make a journal entry for 20716. And it's, you know, for transparency's sake, we never like to make this kind of a thing uh, on the side without you knowing. So it's really just to make it out in the open. If the auditors see it, it's been approved and it's out there. I totally agree with your wish not to go back and try to take this money back from them that was accidentally given. Right. To them. right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Good luck. And if anybody wants to accidentally give me money, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, it was really small, small amounts. To, like I said, it was three people. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, make a motion to reduce the 2021 CPA receivables by $207.16. Um, I second that. Okay. Um, roll call. Uh, I, as Bob, I say aye. Eric, I say aye. And myself, yes. And thank you, Jan. Thank you. And thank you. Thanks, Jan. And don't make terrible mistakes like this in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. We try not to. Nor, you know, oh. we balance to the penny. So it seems like a small amount, but we don't write oh, off no. anything. If right, it's a time right. sense, I'd be here asking you. It's good of you to catch it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very good of you to catch it, actually. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Next item, the decision on returning to full Zoom select board meetings. Anybody else have any thoughts about this? Well, I think it's a, a wise idea. I am nervous of the three of us as much as I love you guys, the, the, you know, sitting next to each other, you know, close together in a, in a meeting while while we have to wear masks indoors uh, and I don't know where the variants are going to go, but they do feel like they are coming. My, uh, my concern is just that if we're masked, it's really hard for the public to, if, if we're masked on camera, it's really hard for the public to participate in these meetings. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think as long as the, the board of health order stands that we have to be masked in public you know, in town buildings. I think we should, I mean, I would prefer to be in person. God knows I would prefer to be in person, but I just think it would be really challenging to have these meetings like televised, recorded with all of us wearing masks. Yeah, so um, I, I agree currently the, the Zoom meeting is appropriate and that, you know, to, to me it's, when, you know, it's one of those things when you order the five-year-old kids to wear masks in their class, then, you have to either wear masks or do a Zoom meeting. But my thing also is that, you know, the reason that that, that it's sort of okay is that, um, you know, the governor through his, the Secretary of Education has mandated this through for, for, all, for all the school facilities. 
Um, and but but that that letter that that order has an end date of October first, unless they continue it. And it also has um, a removal from that once your town hits eighty percent vaccination rate. Um, and nobody's really talking about sort of the, the the number that herd immunity should be established and all that. But um, there's the governor science panel is saying eighty percent, and we're really close to that as a town. If we could just get a few more of those twenty somethings um, to do it, and so so. You know, uh, I, I agree that it's good, but I'd also like to take a look at this. Like if we're still meeting every two weeks, then pretty much every two weeks and wh whether it's still really necessary or not. But I think the Board of Health has that we have to request that the board. I mean, this is like I want to follow the order of the Board of Health. And if the Board of Health says that we have to wear masks in public buildings indoors, then I think that's. That's why I think we should continue doing Zoom meetings, just because wearing masks on camera makes it hard for the public to participate, to understand what we're yeah, saying. I, I, I agree with all that. I'm just saying that, you know, that I wish that sort of there was a syncing up of the Board of Health policy with the state mandate in that as regards the end date or a possible end date. And that the thing that if because that was one of the things, you know, Prior, the prior emergency orders of the state, the governor, he then withdrew the emergency orders. And, and I, I think it's pretty fair to say that across the state, a lot of the boards of health are going to be a lot more cautious than perhaps the data would, would indicate. Um, or, or, and so, um, so, so I would just like to keep, keep, keep abreast of what the state um, you know, experts are saying is a time to go back to no masks or something right. like that. So, yeah, I mean, I know I get that, but I, but I think that's the prerogative of the board of health. So I think if we really, I mean, then we should, we should, you know, talk to the board of health and ask them like, yeah. you know, review the guidelines, you know, so that you're more in line with the governor or whatever, but I don't want to, um, I mean, I, I feel like as long as the board of health is saying masks indoors, I mean, I want to, I want to follow the board of our local board of health guidelines. Uh, I have a different way of looking at it, though. I, 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 I think there's a huge difference between a, a select board meeting and school. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if the three of us were going to get together and talk, I wouldn't mind it being in person and we were all going to sit around a table and talk to each other. But it's not what we do. And right now, I mean, if, if you guys were wearing a mask right now, it would be a very different meeting. Right. And I can see your faces better now, almost than I can when we're all sitting at the table. Yeah. Uh, and, and all of the people who come to our meetings come through Zoom, just like we are now. And we are matching what all those people do when they attend our select board meetings. Uh, but the kids going together to play and, and learn from a teacher in person, they're not trying to do that to cameras, to other kids, you know, I just, I just think there's a huge difference between what we're trying to do and what they're trying to do. Yeah, that's a good point. I, and Phil, I, I mean, I really, I really honor that you like, you know, thinking about the schools and and wanting us to live in the same world as the schools do. <laughs> you, you, right? I, well, <laughs> I, I, it's you know, it's. Um, it's, it's hard to say you five-year-old do this and then, you know, me grown adult. No, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, it's that's, but that's would, a, would those kids choose to be back at home with, with no mask, but through zoom and doing school by zoom. Yeah. That's a trick. Boy, that's a, I, I that's mean, a worms kind of a question, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Probably so. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, the kids, my my nieces and nephews and their kids, you know, uh, they are thrilled. The kids, I mean, I love seeing the kids so happy to be back in school, e even if they have to wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm um, going to recommend then that from here on the, until we choose otherwise, we will be meeting in full Zoom. Well, I think until the Board of Health rescinds the indoor mask mandate for buildings in Conway. Yeah. Yeah. I can and go. we can certainly, you know, provide them with 
all kinds of information to help them make that decision. Um, yeah. So I'll yeah. second, second the motion. And uh, so all in favor, roll call. As Bob, I say aye. Mm -hmm. Erica, yes. And I'm um, yes as well. So let's see. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. But, um, well, I have one. Here's where I get to talk about my visit to the transfer station yesterday. Um, <laughs> Oh, which, which also, by the way, for prior meetings, um, uh, several of us on your humble select board volunteered to uh, be attendants at the transfer station um, eight days ago now, the prior Saturday. At the prior meeting. <laughs> sure, it counts. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, it was four hours. It was four hours of meeting the residents of Conway. Right, it was. It, but lined it, yeah. up in their cars <laughs> one after yep. the other. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, just so I'll just say about that, look, a stop sign is pretty self-explanatory and it does not. The, I understand it's new. It wasn't there before, but um, that th there is no requirement that if you haven't seen it, that you ask the select the, the, the attendants why it's there, because that question came up every single person, except for the guy that just ran the thing over at 20 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> It came up every single person, uh, whatever. But in, in general, um, the attendant was very well behaved. Not, not all of the residents you could say the same for. Um, and that it's an interesting place. And I would recommend anybody volunteering for it. Just, it's an interesting uh, slice of Conway life. And um, I would not have thought that in general, the transfer station is, is actually like a... a, a focus of stress for some people that a lot of people get really attached to their possessions and the the amount of actual like to, to me like arguing over whether to throw stuff out would be like something you do before you put it in the car and drive over but but to have that argument I, I don't know like right there on that spot too just always how often that took place um I have to say that I I had a really great time at the transfer station I would do it <laughs> anytime anyone asks me I was not allowed oh, to use the operator the, the, you know, I wasn't allowed to push any buttons or do anything of, of, of use. Um, but I, I did also talk to a lot of people who were like, oh my God, this is great. Like the select board has office hours at the dump. Like, you know, I, mean, I had that idea. Like if we it like just, you know, meet and greet on the weekends, you know, just show up for like, you know, hour, couple of hours, that's where people are. And that's where they come up to you and they're like, oh my God, hey, this is the thing that I'm thinking about. <laughs> they were super happy to see you there. Just like, you know, <laughs> anyway, I had a great time. I would, I highly recommend anyone working. Well, at the it's good. It's good because when I was there, I was informed by the attendants that Wednesday, the 29th, there is absolutely none of them that are available to work that day. So, of um, of this month. Yes. Oh. I would. So, damn. No, I can't, I'm going to be out of town. I would do it. <laughs> I, I said I, I hope you're letting OSHA training. I feel like I would happily go through OSHA training so that I can be like the backup because I would yeah. totally do that. It like, but I understand that I can't unless I'm certified to you know push the trash compactor button or whatever, or open the paper recycling. But um, but I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> I volunteer. But the the other thing that 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 I learned there um. So, so we now have an online, uh, uh, residents um, ha have the ability to get an, on to purchase their sticker online, um, which I guess was Jan's idea or whatever, and it seemed like a really good idea. What was shown to me was receipts from people that su submitted them at the transfer station for their sticker that showed that they were not in fact Conway residents and that it can be purchased online without having to disclose your address. Well, that's not good. No. Oh. And, and so, so I, saw, I saw the receipt of uh, a Nicholas S. from Church Street, Shelburne Falls, which I know is not in Conway. And I saw the receipt from um, uh, cl a clap uh, from Springfield. 
um, who has been depositing demolition waste. Um, and so this is definitely a problem. So I wanted to alert this to our town administrator and that the there is a there is the ability for non-residents to purchase this the receipt and then show that they have it, you know, in, in a long line of, of, of crowds. Here's my here's my receipt here. It shows I paid it and they get their sticker and and they're um, actually Conway residents. And, and then it shows afterwards they're quite honestly saying that they're not a Conway resident. It's the only time they've ever been asked. So mm -hmm. um so that's even like hard to get them for like something like theft or whatever, because they did, they just do, you know, it, um, so, so, uh, you know, and, and how to claw back a sticker like that. You know, they, they did give their contact information and they should be phoned and say, you're not a Conway resident. You know, you need to take that sticker off. Well, I guess um, it's only good but, for one year or so, but I mean, someone could theoretically but, deposit a lot of trash in one year. Yeah. Um, especially if they're a contractor that's taking a trailer full of demolition waste to fill up your, yeah, uh, your bulk waste thing that now I can't use. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was full cool when I was there. That was that was <laughs> it was the biggest gripe was that people had to come back Wednesday. So the sticker, this the online sticker thing sounded like a great idea. I'd all I'd be for all be just for pulling the plug on it immediately. Um, until the uh, s some solution is worked out, but I, I think that it would be wise just to stop selling online transfer station stickers immediately because a flaw in the process has been revealed. I can so, tell you that this had come up with the Board of Health, and we discussed it. And I thought the problem had been solved, but I guess it fell through the cracks. So um, I'll check with Jackie and Jan about that. Because once word gets out, yeah. And, uh, and we're helping get it out right now. So, <laughs> well, that's true, but um, that's what we're. No, because we got some dump vigilantes who are going to be there. Like, <laughs> you don't know yeah. when I'll show up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not exactly the same, but but I, I have heard from some of the attendants there still is a shortage of attendants. I thought that we had hired enough transfer station attendants that it's fully staffed. Well, Lee, Lee is retiring at the end of this month. Uh-huh. So that's, yeah. Um, which, which will be a big loss actually. Yeah. For, you know, for real. So, um, so that's certainly one more vacancy. Um, well, again, I'll just say I'm willing to go through the OSHA training and <laughs> step in and <laughs> Monitor the dump situation in any capacity that's required. <laughs> you could do it every Saturday and Sunday, I bet. Well, I I mean, I could. I'm just saying, like, I'm I'm totally willing to be like, you know, the qualified backup person. Great. <laughs> All right. So that, that was that was my items not anticipated 48 hours. Erica or Bob, do you have anything? No. No, I don't have anything. Town administrator update. I did see what Bernie had sent out sort of a two-fisted update, sort of one for each week. Yeah. Okay. No, it was it was because the last meeting I had my report ready and I just forgot to give it to you. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Yes. Okay. Um, so I thought a very nice mix of things that you're doing and things that you're looking forward to doing. So very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have anything to add or do you want to agree? I, I don't know what you want to do. You want to read them or give highlights of them to the town or. Um, I, I can, although if you'd rather not have me read through everything, well, let me just give highlights. So we, we know about um, Lori moving over to the town hall. I'm thrilled about this, not just because we have Lori working there um, for us, but also because, because she's taken on all these different positions the town hall will actually be open every day of the week um, and she's posting her hours. And I just think that's a fantastic service to residents to be able to know that they can go in and any day, you know, any day you check the hours first, but um, five days a week. And of course, Ginny's last day was um, on the 11th. So she's retired and we're working on our um, project for her, which I'll say more about at another date, but um, 
I did want to mention um, a couple of things. The personnel committee is currently, we have nobody in any position on the personnel committee. And there are uh, quite a number of things which I would like to review and revise. Um, so I'd like just to put the word out that if anybody's interested in being on the personnel committee, I, I would be thrilled if they would put themselves forward. It's three members, one select board appointed, one moderator appointed, and one finance committee appointed. And the caveat is that you cannot have been an employee or an elected official of the town for three years prior to the appointment of the personnel committee, which has made it a little bit tricky. Um, so, and then- um, That's a bad caveat. We got to get rid of that caveat. <laughs> no, seriously, why can't we just get rid of the caveat? Well, well I, I understand why that's in place. <laughs> well, yeah. but we had one person at least, and because of the caveat, we, we no longer have that one person. Well, the caveat's in our bylaws. So just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that we, can, we can certainly discuss revising that, um, but yes. So, um, so I may also be bringing some things to the select board in the meantime, because there are th some things that I feel um, should be attended to you know, sooner rather than later. So probably in the next couple of meetings, I'll be bringing some things to you. Um, also wanted to mention that um, Donald Walker had resigned from the Franklin Regional Transportation Authority um, uh, as a representative. And if somebody's interested, um, there is a position open. Um, I will be taking the, I will be gone um, October 5th, 6th and 7th. Well, I won't be gone, I'll be, working from home so I can hear properly to take the first of my um, MCPPO classes um, for that designation. Um, I did, it wasn't in the report, but I also had my first meeting with the small town administrators of Massachusetts and that was wonderful. Um, fantastic group of people who all share their knowledge and it could not have been better um, for me to spend my day there. Um, we're gonna have a Professional Development Day on Friday, September 24th from 9 to 11 a.m. At that time, um, both the town hall and the town offices will be closed and it's going to be on cybersecurity. So, you know, that's it's big in the news. It's definitely a big concern everywhere. Um, the FERCOG is actually putting together quite a few trainings. I'll be attending a lot of them um, on cybersecurity. Thrilling item, but it's definitely something that we need to, to pay a lot of attention to. Um, and of course, I also had the meeting with um, the schools. I got to meet with the town administrators from Whiteley, Deerfield, and Sunderland, as well as um, Darius Modesto and Shelly Pareda. And it, that was wonderful just to get to, to meet them and, you know, get my feet wet with them. So I think that was all I had for that. Thank you. Great. Um, any select board member comments or concerns? Erica? Got nothing. Um, not me, no. Yeah, not a comment, or I guess just a whatever. Seeing everybody wearing masks again is, it's, it's, it's hard to take, I think. It's Please. funny, to be, being down at the uh, farm share on Friday after what, three months of not what two two three months of not wearing masks and then see everybody wearing a mask again and just um mail any mail no but if i may i forgot one announcement that i wanted to make sure um you all knew which is that i will be on vacation next week so any agenda items please send to louise i'll be in i'll be in on that friday for that training that I scheduled. Um, but other than that, I'll be out next week and then, yeah, be back on that Monday. Okay, have fun, have fun. This is your first vacation. <laughs> Staycation. Good for you. <laughs> well, no, good for you. Cause if you don't make yourself take them, then time goes by and you have no vacation. Mm -hmm. Um. Announcements. We have an announcement of the Board of Health mask order as of September 8th, 21. Wear a mask, boys and girls. So that's the announcement. Did I pretty much get that right? Yeah. Um, next meeting, two weeks from tonight. 
which would be the 27th, correct? It's Monday. I, I have Monday. down that Erica will be away. I will be away, yeah. Uh, well, then it will be me and Robert holding down the fort. Hey, Monday the 27th. Monday the 27th at 6 p.m. on Zoom. And um, with that, we have a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Oh, aye. Aye. <laughs> very I good. You know. somebody, somebody said before this meeting that it was going to be very short, and I cautioned them. I was wrong. It was very short. Very good. Well done. Nice to see you guys. Oh, yeah. you too. Even if it's all from our homes. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, Thank everyone. You, Thank you. Good night. Good night.